Hello pilots and welcome back to another X-Wing flight video brought to you by Out of Art Gaming. As always, my name is Phil and today we are completing the trilogy. That's right, we are doing large ship, aces high, nine players because we are absolutely crazy. But joining me to go through this game and he was also playing it as well, we have... Hello, I'm Fraser and thank you for having me on, Phil. No worries, Fraser. Glad to have you back. It's been a while since we've had you on the channel, but we thought who better to go through this game than someone who's actually there and can accurately explain how crazy the evening was there. So what we'll do, we're going to go through all the ships. Now, we haven't got the upgrades on the ships because well, when we start going through them, you'll understand we won't be able to fit them on the screen at the same time. So all of these ship up ship lists are going to be in the description below so if you are curious as to what anyone was flying they'll be in the description below but we're going to run through them now so we're going to start just left to right alternating who goes through so first ship we have is actually ben flying the star fortress with venny and on there we have trajectory simulator perceptive co-pilot veteran turret gunner proton bombs Pattern Analyzer, Page Psycho, Seismic Charges, and a Shield Upgrade. And um, what's Dan got on there, Fraser? Okay, so Dan, uh, he's flying Ray in the Falcon, in the Resistance Falcon, and he has Rose. He also has Finn, uh, Shield Upgrade, the Ion Missiles, Corsella, and of course, the Ray uh, Falcon title card. I mean, when you're doing large base ships, you kind of expect to have Ray turn up. Um, just a point to note, this was a 100-point limit for each ship as well. Yeah. Uh, next down, we have the second Star Fortress. We have Wes, who is flying Eden Kefel. He has Trajectory Simulator, Perceptor Copilot, Advanced Optics, Skill Bombardier, Ray, Delayed Fuses, Cluster Mines, and Proximity Mines. Yes, indeed. And we've actually got two Falcons, both Resistance Falcons, if I got that right. We've got... No, Scum Falcon. Scum Falcon. No, you're quite right, actually. It's a Han in the Scum Falcon. Not that he flies every single Falcon, to be fair. So we've got Scum Falcon with Han, Triple Zero, uh, Trick Shot, Cluster Missiles, Kira, uh, Veteran Turret Gunner, uh, Dead Man Switch, a Shield Upgrade, and he's got the Lando uh, Falcon title. Yeah. Yeah. Surprisingly cheap ship, that one. The Scum Falcon is just ridiculously cheap. Uh, and rounding off the left hand side, we have Mad Bots with the Jump Master and Nomlum with Auto Blasters, Maul, Bosk, Babu Frick, Stealth Device, and Proton Torpedoes. Yes, indeed. Uh, and on the right side of the board, we have the lovely Quinn with the uh, VX100 Light Freighter, aka the Ghost flown by Kanan, and he's got Mag Villaro, uh, veteran turret gunner as well, uh, the ion turret, because obviously you need that if you're going to have veteran turret, and advanced sensors. Absolutely. A lot of veteran turret gunners on here. Uh, next, we've got, oh, game, we're just about to start, but we'll quickly go through it. So we've got Connor with Dash Rendar in the YT-2400, Perceptive Co-Pilot, Jin Erso, Outrider, and Trickshot. And wait, hold on. There was a jump master there a second ago. Where's that just gone? Just went yeah, straight up the board. That's right. Madbots decided he was in a bad position, so committed Harry Carry and flew off the board to get into a better position. I mean, you you can always ex expect Madbots just to go for something silly, and the only time would would for something like that would be right here. Yeah. I mean, in Aces High, you can do that, but it's just... I mean, when he did it, we were all just like, oh, my God. There's always yeah. one. There is always one. Anyway, back yeah, to the I wasn't list. really got surprised. Two... It's got to be said. It's, it's, it's on form for him. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of ships there, so if he can get himself a slightly better position later on, it could help. But we've got two yeah, more ships to go through. So what is Rich flying? So the lovely uh, Richard is flying Lieutenant Tavistan in the uh, Upsilon. Uh, his upgrades are the Heavy Laser Cannon, Captain Phasma, Kylo Renner's crew, uh, the Novice Technician, 
the shield upgrade again. Advanced sensors, the hyperspace, hyperspace tracking data, and the biohex crypt codes. So yeah, interesting build there. And I'd feel remiss if I did this myself, but Fraser, what are you flying? Oh, what am I flying? Uh, well, I have got uh, Rear Admiral Kairanu in the Decimator. And compared to most of people, I think I've got quite a few, quite minimal upgrades on here. I have uh, the Grand Inquisitor. I have Veteran Turret Gunner, Marksmanship and Dauntless. There we are. So not very many upgrades there. Uh, but again... Compared to some, no. Yeah, compared to those Star Fortresses and hard as well. But oh, you know yeah. what, Some, sometimes having a lot of upgrades isn't always the best thing. And again, with Tyranny, you're getting quite a good ability with him. Initiative 5, a lot of health there. So yeah. I'd say it's quite a strong chassis anyway. So yeah, I understand it being more points. Yeah. But so, there we go, guys. That's what we've got on the table for you. It's a nine-person, large base, aces high game. For those of you that have not played Aces High yet, I highly recommend it. It is oh, yes. such such a good time. Um, this is the third in our little Aces High series that we've done, and it's a regular regular thing in the store as well. Worth doing, and you can find the rules for that in the uh, Huge Ship Upgrades Pack, I believe it was. Um, but basically, the aim of the game is to score six points faster than anyone else. You score one point for the first damage on any ship. You score two points if you destroy a ship, and you also get a token on your ship, which is a bounty marker. Now, if you have a bounty marker and someone takes you out, they get two points and your bounty marker, so you're actually worth three points at that stage. Mm. First person to hit six points, the game will end at the end of that turn. After that turn, what you'll do is you'll count up all the points that you have accumulated, plus your bounty markers, total points wins. Pretty straightforward, really. Exactly. Easy. Another good thing about this is obviously when you die, you're not out. You do come back the next turn. You'll notice on the screen you've got some odd-shaped templates on the table. Uh, they're hyperspace markers, numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4. And what you'll do in the setup phase for the next round, you'll roll a dice and it will correspond to one of the points on the hyperspace marker and you reset up on that point facing outwards, fully healthed up, all your upgrades back, ready to start the fight again. So you do become a bit of a target as you're going to be the first one people are going to want to hit because you've probably still got all your health, but yep. it is a good game, recycles through, and let me tell you, doing this with large bases, we were a bit worried, but it was actually hilarious. Yeah, no, I don't mind telling you that I was a, I was a smidge concerned that it would just drag on a bit, but it, it was really good. And I also give credit to the guys who actually, I think, were part of that. Yeah. So, I mean, absolute credit to all of the players at the table. They had a great time with it. They made sure that the game actually flowed pretty quickly. Now, this game did take over two hours to play. Don't worry, guys. We've cut the recording down a little bit, as we normally do. We're putting this into two parts. So this is part one, and we'll come straight back for part two a little bit later on this week. But it's an absolutely hilarious game. Anyone that's seen the previous games we've put up will know how much fun it is. But yeah, nine players this time just absolute carnage to be had I think and also I think the last bit of information you guys will need is uh, Ben is flying the uh, fortress of the Valkyries and Wes is just paying the stock bog standard star yes. fortress absolutely so top left of the screen right by his name is where Ben is and we've got our first attack of the game. We actually have Dan taking a pop at yourself. I mean, you are right in each other's grills there, so it makes sense. I mean, I was going for him too, so I, I don't blame him at all. Yeah. 
And to make it a bit easier, guys, if you want to see who's actually shooting against who, top of your screen, you'll see on the left is the attacker, on the right is the defender, so that not only can we keep track of this, but you can also keep track of it too. So that is a pretty good attack there, utilising the ability of Rose to get that target lock. So that is... I'm sorry, friends, that's a lot of damage coming in there. I don't think you can avoid yes. that with your zero evades. Yes, that is the downside of the decimator that I think we've all found, is that you just have to sit there and take hits. Yeah. Not not too dissimilar to the one of eight ships, but you just take damage and that's it. I mean, you do have the most hit points on the board. Oh, yeah. That even takes into account you don't have any upgrades to increase that either. Some of these ships have shield upgrades on, but you've still got 16 hull basic. And I'm not going to lie, I love the Decimator. It's a cool ship. So and, and I'm yeah. never going to complain about seeing it. Uh, I'm going to, after uh, Beachhead at the weekend, I think I need to sit down and make some Decimator lists. Oh, definitely. It was great some... to get it out of the box, yeah. Yeah, there's some good there's some good fun lists you can have in there. And that's not a bad return shot either. You can pretty much guarantee well, you've guaranteed yourself a point there against Dan. Absolutely. As to whether as to how many. Yes. Unfortunately he's still got his shields there, so he won't be able to push a crit through, but No. Crits crits in this one are gonna be interesting. Unlike the small or medium base, where you've got more hull, those crits are probably gonna possibly hang around a bit longer and cause you a lot of grief, I can imagine. I think, without offering any spoilers, I think I remember that happening for most of us. Yeah. I mean, again, crits won't hang around on the screen there, guys, because, well, with that much health, it'll push some ships off the board, but you will notice later on, popping at the bottom of the screen, any crits that do arise will be shown there. So we've tried Excellent. to keep it as quick and clean as possible for you. But it looks like we've got Wes taking a shot at Duncan, seeing if he can scratch the Falcon's paint job. That's a pop shot from the side, I'm, I'm thinking. Yep. Perceptive co-pilot coming in handy there. Mm, very nice. And that looks Couple like of one damage. Yeah. Yeah. And that's Not pretty bad. good. It's to the point, though. Yeah. I would say I think the initial first blood point is the easiest to gain. Oh, definitely. I, I think that in any variant of Aces High, that's going to be the easiest one to get. Um, getting an actual kill in small base Aces High isn't too difficult because, again, no, terrible at all. You're looking at what maximum health on most small base ships would be seven, I think, and and those ships don't tend to have many shields. I'm thinking like a bubble with a hull upright or something. Medium something takes like a bit. Medium takes a bit longer, but you don't have many evade dice. No. With this though, there, there's a lot of shields and hull to chew through, so it can take a bit longer to actually get a kill, unless you're mad bots and you fly off the table. Then, yeah, then there's if, a kill if, if in doubt, just fly off. Don't get any points for that. And if you do have any bounty markers, that's when you don't want to fly off because that can seriously hamper your point scoring there. Yeah. But that was a panic pilot there for Dan from Quinn. So there is our first crit of the day. Is that going to affect Dan, particularly at this point, because of Ray's Falcon? So with Corsella on there, not at all. Exactly, Basically, yeah, exactly. He'll, he'll just do a blue maneuver and that's all the stress gone. It's For six points, that's a ridiculous upgrade. It's so powerful. And again, you combine that with Ray's Millennium Falcon and it just works. It works so well. What's that? I can do the sloop, then I can do a boost and rotate. I've got three stress tokens. It's all right. I'll do a blue maneuver and get rid of it next turn. He's also ionized him as well, I've just seen. Yeah, iron's going to be tricky in this one because you need to get three to actually ionize a ship. So that's going to be a bit more of a challenge there, I feel. But that's a good strong attack from Rich into Quinn there. And the reinforce Ooh, is in the front. I believe that's range three, so Quinn does get an evade. 
and doesn't get it. So that's all nope. four shields down on Quinn. So points rapidly accumulating there for everybody, getting those early damage in. Yeah, we've got a uh, yeah, good chunk of us are now on one point, which is good. Yeah, looking at it, only... I think there's four ships left that are still fully healthy and worth taking a pop shot at. And I think Ben is going to try and get one of them with shooting at Wes. That's right. Fort Star Fortress and Star Fortress. And there's some points tumbling over there for Ben. Ah, uh, see, that was, that was unfortunate. Yeah. You're, you're thinking maybe with just a little a little single you might dodge that one, but... Yeah, unfortunately not. Oh, hold on. Oh, no, no, he's got tokens, isn't he? Of course he has. Ah, so he did manage it. Nice. Star now, Fortress, surprisingly resilient. Indeed, was... he's rotating his arc. Ben, sorry, he's rotating his arc. Yeah. Does that mean he gets a second shot? It does, because he's got veteran turret gunner and page. It allows him to rotate his arc after he's done an attack. He can either rotate his arc or drop or launch a device. So he's chosen to rotate his arc and then take a second shot at Wes. Unfortunately, Wes had no perceptive co-pilot or force there, so Ben does score his points eventually. He does. A vet turret gunner doesn't specify you have to be a different target, does it? No, you just have to use a different, um, a different, different turret. Yes. Yeah, That's different, right. a different turret. So, for instance, um, yourself, uh, the Falcons, they couldn't use, they couldn't do two shots out the front because it would be the different turrets. Um, but with right. Wes, he's got the forward arc and the turret. Same with Quinn, forward arc and turret. So. They, they could actually do that. Indeed. Madbot, Madbot is now back in. He is it's indeed. a place I think I like very much. Yes, it's an interesting position. Again, he didn't really have a huge amount of choice there, um, but that is going to be a tricky place there. Well, like um, we said, you've got to be facing out, and yeah. I can see at least three ships that are blocking uh, placement if he wanted to go anywhere else, so... Absolutely. And is it you, bad? I don't know. I, I wouldn't say it's, it's terrible. Those, it's one of those things, with large base ships, you, you just expect some, something to be blocking. But that looks like a seismic charge there from Ben, hoping to indeed. cause some serious damage there. That's in a nice position there. Let's see... What Madbots is looking to do? I mean, so, yeah, I like it. I don't know if it's out of the bomb. Actually, I think I think it is out of the bomb. Uh, well, it's a seismic charge, so that will end up hitting one of the obstacles. So that's true. He's that's true. definitely going to get caught in that. But I think what's interesting with Nomlum, even though he's initiative one, with his ability that he rotates his arc back to where he got shot from he's almost always in a position to guarantee a shot yeah this this one is a little bit harder because if the first person to shoot him was duncan and he's the only person in his arc and everyone kills duncan and leaves Noblum alone then he might not but it's a it's a very unlikely scenario to happen that's yeah, that is that's true actually I always get confused with the seismic because I think, in my mind, I'm always trying to avoid the bomb and then you you, you realise, oh no, it's a seismic and you go, ah, obstacle. I'm not going to be able to dodge that one. Yeah, seismic is the odd one of the bunch where it does that. So you, you do have to be aware of that. But it's, it's interesting, like the positioning Ben is in now works really well because if that was mm. any other bomb, he'd be catching himself in that trajectory simulator yeah, exactly. from that is is tricky but this Although has actually would he worked be worried out at this time uh with the amount of health he's got probably not um it would be an interesting tactic to bomb yourself because then you would be denying someone that first blood point yeah exactly i was just thinking that exactly so it is an interesting one there and that's disappointing for wes because he's elected not to 
drop or launch your device, hoping to do it after moving, but you need to fully execute that maneuver to do it, and Madbot's yeah. got in the way. So yeah, no, that's that's disappointing. But it's, it's a good day for Duncan, though. It means he's clear of a bomb from Madbot uh, from Wes. Yeah, no, he can avoid the bomb. It's a question of did he also follow suit and go left, or did he go right and pick one of the other chaps? Yeah, I mean before. Madbot's place back down. That that side of the board is obviously getting very very busy. Yeah, and you've got a a nice healthy dash rendar there that could be interesting to go against. Yeah, I think so. Ooh, and there leave, is a... leave all of us up there to deal with to deal with our bumping and all our actions yeah. and all that all our nonsense there. Just oh, get a it's... nice clean shot on dash. That would be quite nice. It's fine. I can imagine it's going to get cleared up quite quickly up there. Um, well, and... We've got two zero evade ships. I mean, just take damage until they die. Yeah. Uh, looks like we've got double bumps there. Now, this is the point where if I was you, I'd be a little bit disappointed I didn't have Oiken in the Decimator. That's true. Annoyingly, he might have actually been a better call. I mean, when you in this sent style the... of game, maybe maybe he's the right choice. I mean, I know you're a fan of Chirinu in the Decimator. Me personally, I love Oiken. I think he's brilliant. Um, you have Oiken with Dauntless Intimidation, which less less useful in this scenario. Um, but it gives you a few more points to play with as well. So you could have Darth Vader on there. And then you could just run in and bump and not care. And we could like, well, I'm yeah. still going to shoot you at range zero. I mean, I think Oiken's brilliant. But again, Chirinu's ability with his reinforce, correct me if I'm wrong, it allows you to change a focus to a crit if, they, if you're reinforced in that arc. Yes. Yes, no, that's, that's right. So, again, that is a really good ability. And double that down with marksmanship that you've got on him as well. If you've got them in bullseye, you're potentially like putting through two crits there. And then you've got the Grand Inquisitor for the Force as well. So you've got yeah. a really strong ship there with Chirinu. Well, I really like Grand Inquisitor. I used him in a in another list that I used for... I think it was, that was two tournaments ago. Not our Dantooine double torn but the previous one and it yeah. was just the idea of multiplying your actions yeah i mean that's that yeah. that's where he does come pretty handy and uh there is another point for ben because that seismic charge has hit both wes and madbots there so yes good use of the seismic charge there it was a good draw like it a lot and now we're going to get into all of the action. Looks like pretty much everyone is going to get a chance to have a go at someone. I think we just got Duncan okay. debating whether he takes a shot at Wes or tries to get some damage off Connor. If he, I don't think... Oh, it's the triple zero trigger there. I yep. don't know if he's got Connor through the obstacle, if Trickshot will come into play. I think they've called that it doesn't, unfortunately. I would have to agree. I think they're coming right past it. Dunk is too far forward. Yeah. It's a shame, because that would have been really good. No, uh, it's, no. it's annoying, because sometimes you put a thing on there and it just doesn't happen in the game. And I think on a dash matchup, I think Dash can easily avoid all that. Yeah. I mean, it's nice to see Dash on the table, actually. We don't see many YT-24s. I know that, obviously, they've had a, a considerable points drop because when 2nd Edition first came out, Dash was so expensive. Everyone yeah. just looked at it and went, OK, no. But he it's nice taking to... a little bit of a sabbatical, let's say. Yeah, it's nice to have him back on the board. And it's nice to see all these different ships, actually. Um, well, that's another there's... good thing about this, isn't it? Is that we will 
we've all gone okay let's take a ship that we've not really used we're not we're not going for a particularly serious matchup yeah th- this is this one's all about fun oh 100 i mean i i like to think that pretty much all the games that i play are more about fun than the actual winning even at a tournament my aim at a tournament is to have fun and enjoy what i'm playing and i hope that a lot of our viewers as well are enjoying the game because yes. that's that's the main thing we want to get out of this uh i've actually said to myself um you've reminded me i actually said to myself earlier today in fact that when it comes to saturday i would like to have fun close matches because it tends to for me anyway it tends to be the closer we are in points whether it's win or lose they are the most fun ones yeah when it's a a totaling and your dice just absolutely fail you it, it's it's annoying because you think this this could have been different and that certainly happened to me before um and actually i think the, it's a bit of a hollow victory sometimes when that ha- when you come out on top like that yeah i know what, i know what you mean it, it can be like that but as long as you as long as there's something you can get from each game Yes. Like if it's a learning point, if it's a new appreciation for certain builds, um, then that's always really good. But I mean, with this, it's just, it's nice just to see people getting big ships and putting as many upgrades on them as they can physically fit on them. And that, yeah, is, yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, other than maybe Ray, I don't think any of these others are built how you would generally run them. Ray is the mm. only one that is pretty much how I'd expect Ray to be, except normally you wouldn't see ion missiles. No, that's just there to sort of fill out the points, isn't it? Yeah. I like mean, I'd give who... I'd give Rack a, a go like this. Not sure what I'd put him with, mind you, but I'd, yeah. I'd give him a go like this. Oh, I'll tell you what, that's a really good strong shot there, Fraser, and that would be using that marksmanship definitely. Hit double crit on the ghost. There's no way that Quinn is able to avoid that. No, no, I was, I was, I was pleased with that role. It, it, marksmanship is something I always am um, and are a little bit as well, to, actually, because it's a one pointer and you, and it's very situational. But on a good situation, actually, but on a big base like this, it's much easier to get to get your bullseye yeah. shot. So. That's a good shot from Connor there as well. well that's it's a very shame nice. that Rich still has more shields than a Gazanti on his ship. Um, but he's down to three and Connor gets his point. I know, but but yeah. that's, that's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. I know what you mean about Marksmanship. It, it's an upgrade I like. It, I like the one point talent upgrades. Dead Eye Shot yes. is, a, is a, a favoured one of mine. Um, but sometimes it's that decision of do you do dead eye shot or do you do marksmanship? Like trying to get the right combination in there can be quite tricky. Yes, I know, I know exactly what you mean. Oh, that's that's not good there. That's not a good roll, but he's got a target lock. Yeah. Uh, oh. You see, that's not. I mean, that's an improvement. It is an improvement, obviously, using using the. Uh, Linked cannon ability to get yep. the additional dice on heavy laser cannon. Spend the mm. Kylo Force as well. That gives you three. Yeah. It's all going through, so... I mean, Kanan is definitely hurting there. You're down to four. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of health to take down from there. And to, and to be fair to Quinn, because me and Dan have bumped... You've got three targets on you. We're obviously not going to be able to shoot each other. Yeah. I mean, with um, Dad, his arc was actually forward and back, so he couldn't quite catch Quinn, so he took a shot at exactly. our bots instead. So it's still two shots, but that's still a five-dice shot from Rich and a three-dice shot from yourself. Ouch. Yep. Oh, God. Where's That's just nasty. Range three, hit crit going through. Fuel leak... That's not good. That's gonna hurt uh, here. And the panic pilot. And does yeah. the fuel leak now trigger? 
the fuel leak would trigger. And yeah. the the thing is, he does also have a console fire on there as well. Yes. Which kills him. <laughs> Those of you that watched last week's game will probably remember that this is not the first time Quinn has taken his own ship out with a with a console fire recently. I mean, he doesn't get two points in a bounty marker for that. It doesn't count, but it does mean he has just denied points there to anyone hoping to get those two points. So that is actually absolutely crazy. Spending his focus and putting some serious hurt on you there, Fraser, giving you a pa Ouch. Panic pilot on a decimator. We've got a few panic pilots already. And I think yeah. that's possibly the most... It's not the worst crit, but it's certainly up there for me. It means yeah. I'm, I'm already stressed from using the Dauntless. I've now got three stress. That's putting my Grand Inquisitor out for three rounds now. I think the only combination that would be worse for you... Um, but I was thinking damage engine would work because your strengths are the blue ones anyway. Damage but, engine wouldn't be horrible. No, but it's it's definitely not an ideal situation for you to be in. You've got three three stress tokens and an ion token on there. Ouch! That was that was a big turn two there. A lot of points going through. Oh yeah. Um, a lot of ships. I said a lot of ships, mainly Quinn getting absolutely battered there. You've taken another chunk of damage, but absolutely crazy. I, I mean, am I even half yet? Yeah, that's the question. Uh, yes, you are half pointed because it's 16 only points. 16, 16 points, well, only just then, it's got to be said. Yeah. So, Ben to take a shot, and then we've got. Oh, I wonder if uh, Madbots will be able to get a shot off on you. Depends on who Ben shoots at. Ah, right, so he's going to take a shot on Wes, so... Sounds good. That, that's a bit disappointing. One focus, I mean, yeah, it's not a lot you can do with that. Yeah. Is I mean, it even not... worth it? That's better. Hit crit there. There we go. That's Ben into Wes. That is. So still just dodging, the crit. still dodging one. That's He's doing rigid. really well there. But there's another panic pilot. That's a lot of panic pilots in this game so far. How many have we had so far? At least three. Um, you know what? Because those of you that keep up on our Instagram will probably see that I do tend to post up some of my notes from games and I can actually tell you that at that point that is the fourth panic pilot out of seven crits so seven crits four panic pilots so, yeah I seemed I, I remember when we finished the game we all had about 25 panic pilots on there yeah there were there were a lot in there I mean, with nine damage decks around the table as well, it's likely that some of these crits are going to come up. I mean, if you think there's nine damage decks, that means there's 45 direct hits lying around out there. Oh, that's that terrifying. That is terrifying. But anyway, guys, whilst we are back in the planning phase, just want to remind you that if you do like what we're doing here at Out of Art Game, you can support us on Patreon. The link is in the description below. Um, if you are one of our top supporters, like last week, you can actually suggest a list for us to fly. I do want to put a big shout out for Duncan, who recently actually upped his Patreon level. So thank you very much, Duncan, for your continued support. We do very much appreciate it. Um, but if you want to be a supporter of us as well, the link is in the description below. Thank you, Duncan. So, uh, Quinn is off again. Yeah, Quinn has come back in down the bottom. Another trajectory simulator there. Now, that's, that, that's nice. 
That's a nice. That looks to me to be the proton rather than the seismic, I think. But unfortunately. I think it was. From what memory serves, I think so. And it yeah. does make sense with that as well, because now we've got ships much closer to the, to the bomb, unlikely of getting out of range one, unlike a small war, me even potentially a medium base. Yeah. So I believe that is a proton. I think so. also I'd say that Quinn has placed himself quite well. The downside mm. of the Upsilon, of course, is that once you have something behind you, it's a real problem to get back around and facing that thing. Yeah, it, it takes a long time to turn an Upsilon around. It's probably... Yeah. I'm looking at the ships on the table and it, it's between the Star Fortress and the Upsilon as to which is the clunkiest of the ships by their dials. All the other ships are, are much better, except possibly the Decimator, but what I think the Decimator and the Star Fortress have over the Upsilon is the mobile turret arc. So even if you're behind them, they can still do something. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a fair assessment. I'll tell you what I have done in previous build as well, when I've used the Decimator. I think Agile Gunner is quite nice. Yeah, Agile Gunner is a, a good one to have, actually. Problem I, I'm finding in this game, or I found in this game rather, is that wasting your action rotating your turret can be a bit tedious and e i have got more actions well i don't now obviously but i'm supposed yeah. to have more actions but even so i think just removing that obstacle entirely having the agile gunner could be quite nice if you if you ladies and gentlemen were thinking of using a decimator in the future yeah i find that i'm terrible at knowing when to rotate my arc. That's something oh, I, yeah. I, I always seem to do it at the wrong... I always think, ah, oh, now is the perfect time to do it. And then turns out it was definitely not the right time to do it. I should always oh, yeah. think, if I think it's the perfect time, I should not do it. I'll just I also second find, guess myself. I also find when I put my turret in whatever arc I decide, I always find that is the wrong place to put it and that my opponent will place his... will manoeuvre his ships into... The opposite arc and i'm just there going typical yeah i mean that's again that is sort of part of the game you yes just, you have no idea what your opponent is going to do and you've got to try and second guess that especially when you're playing road that just makes it doubly interesting and you probably will have noticed in between the games a lot of dice being rolled in between the rounds because we are doing road here for both the I-3 and I-5 steps. So we've got three yeah. I-5s and three I-3s, and they are all roading every round as well. So that adds an extra element of utter confusion of us trying to remember who's who's going in what order for a start, and then they've got to work out exactly how much space they're going to have. Because we did this on a normal 3x3 three three mat as well. We didn't yeah. even put a bigger mat out for this i decided to make it as hard as possible for these guys just to be as absolutely hilarious yeah i think it was the right call it was it was really funny and i think i'm now down one stress out of three uh not just yet i think you actually two stre two you had the not. initiative so you haven't actually had a chance That's to true. go yet so That's you true. I I think a um, uh, tiny bit of advice for uh, you, those of you watching and, and listening, if you are going to have lots of uh, clashing initiatives, uh, advice from us would be have marked tokens in some way so you can differentiate who's going first. And you go, right, I've got the number one, I've got the number two, whatever, however you want to do it. But just makes it so much easier. Yeah, we actually used the... We had two copies of the normal first player marker. Yep. And then I actually still have some of the metal tokens. So we had the gold force token and the silver charge token. So it was uh, first player token number one, silver charge number two, and then the gold force token number three. 
and you might occasionally see them being passed around the board occasionally just to be right we know who's going in what order and it definitely it definitely was that is definitely a handy point to have if you are doing road always try and make sure you've got something to mark it even if it's just um a normal game always mark it up so that you know because there's nothing worse than getting up part way through and going who's flying first who's shooting first i can't remember yeah. you know it, it is now worth having your first player marker if you if you still got it from your core set if you've got a fancy alternative even better so Duncan was just there trying to move his target lock over to the gas cloud so that Co uh, Quinn would have no benefit from that. Yeah. Unfortunately, he forgot that he's actually on a rock. So if he did that, he would then not be able to shoot. So he's had to leave his target lock where it was. Yeah, no, um, I think... I think I think that's fair enough, really. I think... Yeah. I think shooting is still better in that case anyway. Yeah, because right now he's going to get shot by Connor because he, Connor can't shoot mad bots because they've bumped. Yeah. But I can see, I'm looking around and see, see what shots are going to occur. And looks like the proton bomb has only hit Wes. I'd say so. Uh, and that crit is damage sensor array. Ooh. Is so that having... terrible? I don't know. Uh, damage sense rate is not too bad. No, I wouldn't say so. No, I agree. Not in this case. <laughs> no, I, I, I think, again, in this type of game, Panic Pilot is going to be your immediately bad one because it shuts down your actions and these ships don't have a lot of blues except no. for Ray, who basically just goes, hey, all stress gone. Um, doesn't care if you're stressed anyway. She can still do yeah. rotate, boost. Hull Breach is going to be the most interesting one, I think. Hull Breach is the worst one. I think that is the worst one, yes. Turning everything to crit. So, Hull Breach and Loose Stabilizer, I think. Uh, loose Stabilizer? Yeah, Loose Stabilizer, I think, are the two worst ones in this one. Okay. Forcing I'd you to say, have I'd to go straight. I definitely agree with Hull Breach. Uh, I've, I've had games with that before, and it's just killed me because just yeah. everything and you can't dodge anything yeah it's not it's not good uh, Duncan scoring a point off Quinn just as he comes back onto the table fantastic but again you kind of expect that ship comes back onto the table it automatically becomes a big target I think the only thing that makes you more of a target is if you have a bounty marker on there and people think mm. that they could get you down quite quickly. You think you think when you've just spawned and think oh, I'm at my absolute best, I can I can give a nice powerful shot into whatever's in front of me. Preferably if that's a nice weak, extremely damaged vessel. Grab yeah. a nice couple of points, but Well, that's a great shot from Dan yeah, on the like end there. I like that a lot. And the lovely Venny Focus. Spend the perceptive just two nice. shots down. Still good, I'd say. Yeah, Venny. I tell you what, Venny is a great Star Fortress pilot. Venny is the Star Fortress pilot, if you ask me. The others yes. are okay, but Venny has got a great ability, and I, I think it's brilliant. I've had some good games with Venny as well. Yeah, I think he's the he's the one that causes me the most grief since I don't fly resistance. I also have. Um, uh, a moral hatred for Star Fortresses because why Ryan Johnson would the Resistance stop using a tried and tested superior fighter of the Y Wing? Hey, the Y Wing came back, but we're not here to open up any discussions about. Yes, let's not let's not sequel bash or let's, <laughs> let's let's not let's not bash anything. Like, let's have a no, let's be positive. Let's enjoy it back. Oh, Wes is that's, not having a good time right that, now. That's, yes. That's that's, two hits and a crit. What is the crit? It's a direct, direct hit. hit. That's, that's points for Connor there. So, Connor. Well done, Connor. You two have... points for the kill. 
and that token he's placing down is his bounty marker so he has now just basically said to everyone come on guys come and have a go if you think come at me bro about. come at me yeah although in connor's defense he's he's the only ship with full health he's not yes. lost any health yet so and his his combination of Perceptor Co-Pilot and Jin Erso is brilliant. Because Jin allows you to change one of those focuses to an evade instead. So when he can get actions and he's not bumping into people, he then just goes, all right then, our Perceptor Co-Pilot, focus evade. Nice. How much is Jin Erso? If you give me two moments, I will have a quick look. I don't think she's that expensive. I think she's probably around four points, but I'm just going to go to the app to find out. This is my shot into... While you're doing that, this is my shot into Connor. Unfortunately, because of my panic pilot, I'm going to be doing quite a few weak shots. Assuming I'm not killed before then, which I think is highly likely considering Rich is right in my face. Yeah. That's disappointing. All the oh, for there. goodness sake. Um, Jin Erso is probably what I three said. points. Yeah, Jin Erso three is points. three that's, points. That's disgusting. I mean, to combo it with Perceptor Copilot does make it 11 points. So to be able mm. to do that, you have to put a lot of points in there. So for that combination, it is kind of brutal. But I mean... Giving yeah, a ship fair, access yeah. to an evade that it might not have normally had by having Ginerso is still really good. But yeah, in, again, in fairness, the cards that require other cards to affect them, no matter how good they are, are usually quite cheap. Yeah, I'd give I'd give the example of five fives actually should get him out again. He's a good good card. I had him the other day. Didn't actually trigger him at all in my game, but. Yeah, reason reason I ask um, folks watching is I, I'm not a Rebel player, I'm not a Scum player, I'm not a uh, Resistance player, I'm not a Separatist player. All the others, I think that's about right. Republic, Empire, FO, that's me, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I mean, you should know it's your collection. So I, I, mean, I, I should know many things, and the fact I don't does concern me ever so slightly. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've bought into everything. So I, I think there's only two packs I don't currently own, uh, and that's the Trident and the Fireball, because I've just Firebolt, sorry, not Harry Potter, Firebolt. So I just haven't Fireball, Firebolt. You know what? That Fireball. one, the one from Resistance. I don't Fireball. have that. Fireball yeah. is the broomstick. That's right. I've seen too many Harry Potter memes at the moment. I keep it stuck in my head. Um, oh, that's a Good shot there from Quinn. Is he gonna he's gonna get those point that first point on Connor? Yes, he is. Fantastic. But yeah, it's the only one only two ships I don't own. Which does make it nice when they do card packs. I'm I'm not there getting it going, oh, there's gonna be half these cards I can't use. I I can use yeah. every card in the pack, which is quite nice. That was a little bit of a downside with um, Pride of Mandalore that uh, some of us have acquired and others didn't. But I was looking at the pack going, hmm, about half of this, uh, actually no, about two thirds are not for me. Yeah. And so I I donated the other half to my younger brother who does the other factions that I don't do. True. Always good though. It's a nice pack to split if it works that way. I think so, yeah. I was hoping for a little bit more in my pocket, but yeah, hey, it's all good. Looking forward to seeing as, them. Yeah, if you're curious as to what is actually the pack, um, link in the, in the top corner for the unboxing that we did recently. Um, we managed to get hold of it slightly early. So it is a very good pack. It's going to be great when we can finally use that, so I absolutely agree. Oh yeah, definitely. There's there's some cards in there that I'm really excited for. Oh, me too. And I'm actually quite interested by the uh, Sabine Red one because that looks like it could have an interesting 
aspect with the dark saber in Aces High. Can you use the, uh, those cards in Aces High, the epic command cards? If I say that you should be, I believe you can use it. Because I believe you I, can. I, I could hear the comment section now yeah. going, yes or no, you can't do that. Hey, comment section, let us know. Yeah, do it, man. It's all good. I mean, that Dark Saber aspect, I mean, even if you can't, I'd still say, hey, let's play Dark Saber because it just sounds hilarious. I mean, it does sound fun. Ooh, that's more a damage pilot. going through. Is, yep. that, is that Dan getting that wounded pilot? Yeah, Ray is not doing so well right now. Uh, oh, is that going to be. Is that going to be exactly what Ben needs to get rid of? He's done it. He's done it. Ray's He's got no it. force. That is a brutal round. We've lost two ships this round. As yeah. you kind of expect by a third, third round in, a lot of damage done. So we've got a couple of ships. Yourself quite close to the, the red line. I definitely think I'd prefer death at this point just to get rid of all that stress. Yeah. I'm looking at a lot of these of the guys who still got shields though. Obviously Quinn respawned, so understandable. Yeah. But I mean again, Rich started with seven. Yeah. Ben's kind of kept himself to himself. So it's not too tricky. But let's see what Noblum could do is the final attack of turn three. Uh, looks like he's going for a long range three. Nope, he's going, yeah, he's going for, to go for Duncan. Going for Duncan. I think that's the right option. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's range two. We're just going to double check if it's obstructed because that is a really close call. That is a tough one, actually, even from here. Yeah. Um, let, let's get Dash out of the way. We like him on the ball, but he's in the way right now. Yeah, he's banging back, so I get, get rid of him. Uh, well, we can't even tell because we're... we're I've used angle, yeah. by the by the wide team. I do believe that it was unobstructed. So one damage did not one go dodge. through. Yeah. Unfortunate mad bots, unfortunate, sir. Yes. But that brings us to the end of turn three, and that will bring us to the end of part one, guys. So I'm hoping that you've enjoyed yourself so far fraser thank you very much for joining me for part one pleasure sir thank you sir and guys don't forget in a couple of days time part two will be coming up so stick around for that make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel and if you like us that much the patreon link is in the description below but we will see you next time for part two <laughs>